Hi everyone, let me get us all set up here. Happy Friday. I'm so excited in case I, I picked some <laughs> extra spicy music today. <laughs> I was like, I need, some, I, need some good, I need some energy today and that got me going. <laughs> Alrighty, I think we should be good to go now. And Shira's home just in time for class. Shira, you get to be the teacher all day long and now I'm gonna be attempt to be the teacher. <laughs> We got a fun class today. So today's a very inspiration focused class and technique driven class because I have a few ideas to share with you using the new Brio drops we have in the shop that I'll show you. And I have a few ideas to use them. I'm hoping we might even have time to come up with a couple more ideas together and just get really inspired to have how to use uh, this type of bead because I think folks sometimes are a little um, nervous about using top drill beads, especially if you don't feel great about your wire working abilities. Um, I know folks get nervous about using top drilled, but I would like us to <laughs> address that today um, and see what we can come up with. So these are the new shape. They're a long, larger size Brio. It's a 14 millimeter Brio. So it's a little bit bigger than your typical Brio drop. Often it'll be six by nine millimeters um, or five by seven. But in this case, it's a larger size. And so it kind of makes it a little bit more fun to play with because it, I know it's a little bit more prominent in your design. So we're gonna start with two ideas I had. Uh, the first one we're just going to touch upon and then move to the main technique idea. So this is a project I just started in Sarah Lovecraft's Hardwired group. And we were, we revisited the, the moon necklace that you might recognize from our class, I don't know, last month. And we want to zhuzh it up a bit, so I added a few dangles, including uh, one of the Brio drops in Milky White. This is the full color array we have in the shop. Jesse just put all these on the website. So I tried to get pretty much every color. Yeah, reds, oranges, orangey, yellow, I guess. We have, and then lots of blues, purple, pink. Try to have most of our bases covered. <laughs> Laura, I think it does look like a boot, a moon. I think you could do it too. <laughs> um, so if you want to check out that class, you can see how to make the moon pendant. And then all I've done is grab some pipe chain from uh, Nile, he has this gorgeous new pipe chain. Has and I put some memory wire inside there, strung it on softlex, and then I've been brew bre wrapping on an ombre of our teardrop brew. So I'll show how to attach those as one idea of how to use these, and it'll kind of show it. Pretty, it'll also show you a, a version of brew wrapping too. So why don't we start there? Catch up on comments for a second. Ah, oh, lots of friends in the comments. Yay, so good to be with all, you all today. <laughs> Cindy, you gotta go get your box. <laughs> okay, folks are starting to get their March boxes. It's very exciting. Thank you for not posting spoilers in the comments. Um, we'll, do an, we'll do our unveil day we dropped them off Wednesday, so on what, this what, coming Wednesday, we'll do our unveiling in Gem Chat. You can start sharing what you're making with the brand new March Sam Speed Box. So to attach one of these brios, we're going to do pretty standard brio wrapping and then just basically attach it, our loop, right to the pipe chain. So I've got about 10 inches of wire that I am going to warm up. <laughs> Rochelle says, did I break out the hot sauce bottle for my crescent moon? How funny you ask. It happens to be right next to me. <laughs> Shara just opened her March box. Shara, you got to text me all of your thoughts, please. Thank you. So go ahead and bring it on and leave yourself just a few inches, even a couple inches. There's plenty. Um, and this is kind of how you would start a basic brew wrap. I'm actually going to do a normal brew wrap and then I'll show you 
attaching it to the, the pipe chain. You want to do one thing at a time. So kind of a couple ways to do it. One way I often will do it is if you just bring both strands upwards and then pinch it. This works well when you are using a thinner gauge wire for brewer wrapping, especially. And then take your shorter end and we're going to secure everything all together simply by twisting it around the upper one. I'm able to do this because this is a 24 gauge wire and it's a lot thinner. If I was using a thicker gauge wire, I'd probably need to get some tools involved. But I've got two little wraps there. Tuck in my end and I'll finish off my Brio wrapping. So a couple ways you can do this. I'm just gonna go ahead and fold this right down so I don't create any more gaps. Bring in my round nose pliers, bring it around. So I'm starting my loop just like you would have wrapped loop. I have to rotate my pliers up, bring it around, and then I can wrap as if it's a, as if it's a wrapped loop. And then it's up to you how much you want to wrap. If I just kept going, this could kind of eventually turn in to a fun little wrap. So I just have to pay attention to how the bead is laying while you get this going. But I'm kind of curious now what it would look like if I brought this down, like we've done in some of the recent classes. I kind of, my hunch was that this shape would take wire really nicely and kind of serve as a nice accent since it's a single colored glass that our copper can kind of become our copper finish that we can do ourselves. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring that up and around to secure. And that's a basic pre wrap. And you can totally see how that could become a beautiful pair of earrings, nice and easily. And you could feature, you could have a whole color array of them as some little charm earrings that I think would sell really nicely. And that could be a nice section of a booth, one idea. So that's technique one, basic brio wrap. These beads work great for it. Say you have some pipe chain, something like this. Let's try attaching it there. You'll notice there's a lot of <laughs> similarities to a few of these techniques in terms of how we can apply them. So again, I don't think it can hurt to watch a brio wrapping again, especially if you're just starting it, figuring out how to do it. Watching it a couple times is probably helpful, and then you just gotta start. I know brio wrapping can feel daunting. I remember I sucked at it. I like vividly remember when I was first trying to brio wrap, and like, they, they all look terrible. <laughs> they look so bad, so so bad. Um, and you just kind of keep doing it. You find that which brio wrapping techniques work well for you because if you pull up tutorials you can find all sorts of ways to do it. This is one of my go-to's. You know I also like a two-strand brio wrap where I make two loops at the top with both wires. Rachel, I think I did that in the brio wrapping 101 class that Rachel Miles and I did. Alrighty, so I've pinched my wires together. Bring one down. And I'm gonna make sure this is staying there in the center. Bring that around, make a couple. I'm just twisting the bead. I'm really holding this, this wire firm against my base wire so that those coils are looking really nice. That's really important. I'm gonna go ahead and let's use a better pair of flush cutters. How's everyone's day going today? I hope it's, I hope something positive has happened. If you want to share in the comments, please, please, please go ahead. If you've got a funny story to share, I would love to hear it today. <laughs> uh, Sharon, yeah, this is Silver Silk Pipe Chain. So it's one of Neelay's newer products. Um, it's a rubber cord, so it does have latex. Not good for folks with latex allergies, but it's really cool stuff. I don't think I have a latex allergy. <laughs> Not that I know of. Um, and then late it's, so it's the rubber with a knitted wire on top of it. So he has this white one that I thought fit the palette of this moon necklace I was creating really nicely. So now that we 
have our brio to this stage, we can go ahead and, and attach a right to it. I learned this technique from Neil during his, one, of his, one of his classes and it works like a charm. So I'm just gonna kind of match up what I've done on that end and start on this side, giving myself a little bit of room so it won't fall off. And all I'm doing is bringing that wire around and I'm bringing it around again so that it's wrapped around twice. Now I'm going to check my positioning to make sure my bead is hanging in line with the others. Because kind of my last chance to fix it, I can kind of move it over. Oh, well, <laughs> maybe not. Yeah, there we go. I moved over a little bit. And from here, we're just going to continue the same sort of brio wrapping we did. We're just now going to come around the top of the bead and go around. Up to you how much you want to do. In these cases, I did a whole bunch of wrapping for an extra little pizzazz. So I don't think too much about this. I just keep going until I like the look of it. All right, something like that should work. I'm gonna bring it to the back. I like to trim my, trim my ends from the back. Come in with the flush cutters. And usually there's still a little bit sticking out so you can come in and tuck that in very gently. And then if we just do this a couple more times, we'll have a full focal piece with the moon. So I think we have time, a couple minutes. We'll go ahead and add on two more and we'll call this one complete. Alrighty. Still with my 24 gauge wire, or actually now that we've done that sneak, I'm actually be happy to show a couple of the other ideas, which is probably actually more helpful. So we'll put that one aside for now. And we'll move on to the next uh, project idea using the drops, which is going to be some cluster earrings. This is a slightly different cluster technique than Rachel Malice taught um, in her awesome cluster class. Um, this one is a cluster based on using jump rings and no chain. And I think Rachel might have used a mix in hers. I never can find my chain, so we're just going to do this all out of jump rings. Um, I thought it would be fun to mix up our glass types. We've got the pink crystal and the lavender amethyst. Are you coming to join class? <laughs> you want to see the moon pendant? Oh, it's so beautiful. This is Emma. <laughs> beautiful. Um, alrighty. So I was going to mix these two colors together in the cascade. And I'm thinking purple will go on the top or pink could go above it. That could work as well. And I want them to be layers to this cluster. I'm thinking I'll even add on some smaller beads at the top and we'll make a full true cluster. Let's make some room here using a mix. These are some beads from the February box and fuchsia purple. I thought all these would mix nicely together. Let me catch up on comments for a moment. Let's see here. Belinda also got her March box. <laughs> Brooke died when she got her March box, but is back with us. <laughs> awesome. Um, at least I am working with the drops today. So we're going to continue on with a cluster idea using them. I'm trying to lower my phone, but I only have so many options here. Okay. I'm going to zoom in. And then I'll be our best bet. So the nice discovery I found about these drops is you can use jump rings so long as your jump ring is thin enough gauge. If it's too thick of a jump ring, um, it won't make it through the bead all the way. But the, t but the drill hole of the bead is close enough to the top 
that I can just gently coax it on to my brew job. And you don't actually have to wrap them in this case. I thought I was gonna have to do a bunch of wrapping to make the clusters, but it's not looking like we have to. So we can go ahead and put these on the jump rings and they'll be ready to go. So, one for the bottom, and then we'll do two pink. This is the pink crystal, but I think it could be fun to come up with various combos using the different colors, like the olive and the amber could be a nice combo for making this design. A couple of the blue tones, maybe the smoky quartz and the white opal. Well, I wanna make all of those now. <laughs> all right, let's see how the first pair comes out something that's been in my head only so far. Alrighty, come on. Doesn't look like it likes that bead. These ones are not friends. Let's try another one. Do you have to be a little gentle? If you force on the bead, it's just slowly moving around, it will break. But now that I've got it on there, I'm not too worried. It has enough room to wiggle and it'll be good. Okay, one pink. Let's hope another pink will work. And once we have all of our goodies assembled, I can show you the basic technique for putting together a cluster because it's very simple. Uh, I'm sure most folks have done the chain cluster technique where you attach all your beads directly to the chain, but you can also do essentially make a chain out of jump rings as you go. All right, something like that. You could add a third color if I have a third complementing color. I have these candy pink ones, but I didn't want something quite that bright. It's possible I'll just mix in more of these. So let's just get a couple more ready in case we decide we want them. Anyone made anything beautiful today? I've been watching Gem Chat. Folks are making so much out of the mystery box and now folks are getting the March box. I think you're gonna have lots to play with. There's no shortage of beads this month at the shop. Now you've got a dozen colors of these burial drops to play with. I love top drill beads like these. Okay, I'm happy with that. Um, the other beads I want to incorporate are some of these February box beads. We've got some rondelles and some rice beads. I'm thinking we'll keep it simple and put on a head pin. Otherwise, you can wrap any bead like a burrito but just by following the same exact technique, putting the bead, treating that as the drill hole and wrapping it like a brio. But in this case, I don't think it'll matter too much. So we'll go ahead and, these are some of the TR cast head pins from the shop. And we'll just make some nice and easy. Is that what I want? Or do I want bigger ones? Let's see. Got bigger purple from the February box. I'll try these out. All right, we'll go ahead and make some basic wrapped loops. If anyone wants step-by-step -step on making that wrapped loops, happy to show it. I'll rock, I'll walk to the next one. And this is one of the thinner gauge head pins we have. They, we, they sell a couple of different gauges. Um, this thin gauge is nice because it's very much easier to do a wrap loop with. Thicker gauge or nicer for other projects. In this context, I want to be able to wrap it. So a thinner gauge head pin will do the trick. All right, number one. Maybe let's do another one of those and a couple of the fuchsia and then we'll see how we want to assemble them. Wrap loop 101. <laughs> Folks are yelling watermelon, which means I am 
off camera. <laughs> Alrighty, wrapped loop. We're going to create a gap between the bead, a gap, gap for the future loops to go by holding them with our flat nose pliers, our flat nose or round nose pliers, and bending 90 degrees. So you should have something that looks like this. Come in and grab the upper portion of that and bring your wire around. Rotate 90 degrees. I was down here. I rotate 90 degrees. So now that I have room to clear underneath. You can take these off now and choose which hand you want to hold this wire with. I am weird <laughs> and Wanda has pointed out <laughs> that I wrap with my non-dominant hand because somehow that makes sense to me. And I'm gonna hold these with pliers or you can do it with your hands. And <laughs> my pliers are stuck in there. And finish off your loops. Come in to cut, tuck in your end. We just want to do that two more times with a couple of our fuchsia beads, and then we should be able to see what it's looking like. <laughs> well, I don't feel so conscious about it, but it's nice to know and point out that I do it a little differently than most folks would. And I have to actively think about like how someone like Sarah does it. I think I practiced it at this point that I like could replicate it, but it's like so not my norm. And I'm okay with that. Alrighty, coming in to make two more wrap loops. Go a little faster this time. So I think how Sarah does it is she still, oh, she swaps her hands. I, oh God. I just don't even think I could. She swaps it and does the wrapping with her other hand. What? My hands are like struggling to know what to do. Oh, that's so weird to me. Okay, let's try it. And she wraps it with her dominant hand. No, no way. Okay, that worked really nicely though. <laughs> the, the wire wrapping was easier. <laughs> Gosh darn it. <laughs> I just hate it when someone's been telling you to do something and they're gosh darn right. Oh, I'll do that again. I'm gonna try it one more time. Uh oh. Uh oh, Wanda, I'm a little nervous here. Okay, I'm still so. Yeah, that's interesting. Doing more of the steps with my dominant hand. It's too funny. Oh my gosh, sorry, I'm not on camera. Let me move the camera down a bit. And that should help me out. Alrighty, I wrap my loop. She moves it to the other pliers, I think. Oh god, I see my hand, my left hand doesn't even know how to hold pliers. <laughs> and then I'm gonna come in and wrap this. Oh, but I kinda like that. That is too funny. Well, I guess we can all learn pick up new things, can't we? Says, I was what now? <laughs> you were right. R I G H T. Alrighty, we've got all our elements ready to go. If I missed your question, please let me know. <sighs> okay. <laughs> so. I like to start my clusters, I think I usually start at the top. And essentially, there's a pattern here where it is two beads per row. So let's try putting, and we might uh, put it together and realize we want to add in more beads, and we totally can do that pretty easily. So two beads onto a jump ring. Probably could be using a thinner jump ring. This will just be longer earrings. Close that jump ring properly and lay that out for yourself. I do sometimes find 
you can lose track of where the top of your cluster is, in which case we can make a little indication for ourselves. Oh, come on. So we're going to indicate that this <laughs> bit of wire scrap is holding where the top of our earring is going to be. And now we can work down the words from there much more easily. Anytime we add on, it'll be between two beads. So I will be adding a bead between those two purple using a jump ring. So our pattern, open the jump ring, bead one, followed by the jump ring in between the, the purples, followed by your other bead. It's always one, two, three, a little sandwich. And close that jump ring properly. If you don't, earrings could come undone or one of the beads might come off your earrings. All right, we'll leave that ready for ourselves for the next row. This is the part where you're probably gonna want a better quality jump ring. I'm just using some of the old ones I had in my stash, but this is a case where you're really wanting where the jump rings are really integral to the structure. Oops. So you could, I would consider using something like a tear cast jump ring that is uh, a bit stronger, much more work hardened. So we did one row, one row, let's do purple next. Purple, jump ring, purple. I can't promise I'm going to love these earrings when I make them. I just love the idea of them. So we'll see how it comes out, and then I'll see if we have any ideas how to adjust them. For the last row, I wanted to do pink. Y'all know about like the cult following around tear cast jump rings? It's like a thing. I got lost. OK, there's my center jump ring. It's a little more confusing because I'm also using jump rings on the brios. I'm just continuing the pattern. I did notice jump ring that was not well closed though. Alrighty, let's find our top of our earring really easily because we have dingly dangle and we can see how our cluster is looking. All right, let's see. It's hard to show you from that angle. Try it from another angle. And we'll see what we think. I think I gotta see them. Okay, they definitely have some weight to like visual weight to them because of the burrito drops. I would consider doing fewer of them or mixing them in more. Yeah, also trying to see how heavy these earrings are. I'm thinking it could be nice with fewer drops. Oh, I also didn't put a bottom drop, did I? To kind of, because there's no, there's not as much, if there's one drop at the bottom, we kind of have more shape to it. Let me add one drop to the bottom and see what I think. Okay, let's do another purple. And instead of doing the pattern, we're just going to attach one directly to the middle bottom. And that should add a little bit more depth to it. OK, I'm not hating it. It's almost feeling a little bit more like a pendant to me. Like I could see this as uh, kind of the middle of, <laughs> you can never lay a cluster out properly. Um, it's feeling more like it's becoming what would be attached to a focal center, which is also fine with me. Just I think because of the size of the beads and how many I used, but the technique stance stays the same regardless of what exact size you use or how many you use. I could see this being one at the bottom with a bunch more smaller beads going up from there. So we have a few minutes. So I let's experiment with that for a moment. And I thought I had one more idea to show you. Okay, is everyone okay if I... Everyone got the technique? Everyone feel good about the technique? <laughs> 
because I do realize I have a lot of ideas to show you and I probably actually need to keep going if I'm going to get to all of them. The next one is a true focal. And I think it, I, it, would, it would not be good to skip over the next one because I think it might inspire folks. I want some thick gauge wire. Where did my 18 go from earlier? Here we go. <laughs> my good old <laughs> Home Depot 18 gauge wire. All righty, how do I want to do this one? First, I need to know that my drops will work on this, which they won't. Let's try a 20 gauge. Generally, an 18 gauge is not going to fit through your check glass. 20 gauge should be fine. All righty, that looks good. There's a couple ways. I'm about to string these up and do wire wraps on this. There's a couple ways you can do it. You can do it with a single wire or two wires. I'm deciding which one I think is, is, not, is better. In this case, we'll do a single wire version. So I just need some extra wire here. I'm gonna cut about two feet of 20 gauge here. Should be enough. I'll probably show both two ways to do this because I really like these techniques as focals. <laughs> Brooke says, I hope there's not a pop quiz. Of course, not. this is just ideas. I'm just trying to throw lots of ideas using top drill beads as my goal for today's class. It wasn't necessarily to have like a bunch of finished pieces, but it was, was to show a bunch of techniques. <laughs> I love the idea of teaching a class at Whole Foods, Wanda. At Whole Foods, <laughs> Home Depot, not the same place. Okay, just for the photo, I'm mostly for the photo. I want to be able to be like, hey y'all, I'm at Home Depot tonight. Okay, so we're gonna get start this off with a wire wrapped loop. I'm gonna make a decently large loop. So I'm gonna come up higher on my round nose. and I am <laughs> gonna use my non-dominant hand to wrap it like a weirdo. Let's do three, let's consider, let's do three wraps. And we'll make sure to do the same on the other side. Come on, coil, there you go. Anyone else talk to their wire? I literally think that's all I do while I make jewelry when I'm by myself. Come on, there you go. <laughs> Lori wants to at least know what candy was in the bead box. I don't know if I'm a, I don't know if I'm the one to spill these secrets, Lori. When is your box coming? Okay, we got we get to pick a new color palette out. We've done uh, dark sapphire, light sapphire, and white opal together. We did. Lavender, amethyst, and pink crystal together. I was thinking something more muted. Or like, more in this vein. But I also haven't used olive yet, so I think I kind of have to do that. I liked this idea a lot. We'll do olive and amber. Future children's names. <laughs> Some really nice things. No one yell at me if all my children end up becoming, have gemstone names. <laughs> There's not a lot of gemstone names that sound class, gemstone names of people that sound classy per se, you know? All right, I'm gonna go ahead and thread on one of those. And how do I wanna do this? We're gonna want little spacers between them. A little hyacinth drooks look here. So I'm just stringing a bunch of these on and then we're gonna come back towards the other way. This wire is very long. And add in some wrap loops. I would probably also do like a metal spacer there, it would be nice. All right, let's just get a bunch of these on. 
spacer, olive, spacer, amber, spacer, olive. Let's see how that's looking. I haven't kept track of how many drops. I wanted seven, I think. At five. Let's do seven. Come on. Spacer, Amber. I think I got to do this off camera. It's never going to happen. Spacer, Olive. Kind of fun. Alrighty, we're gonna come back and end with a wrap loop and then work our way back with the wire. So we want to make about three loops again, so we gotta give ourselves enough room to do that. Bend over and make to make your 90, make your loop, rotate your pliers. Oh no, anyone remember when I said make the giant loop? All right, let's see how, how well we can backtrack here. I think we can do it. It'll just be a little wonky. Come on, wire. <laughs> no one look at my loop, okay? Thank you. <laughs> Actually, well, it could be worse. Once we flatten it, it'll be okay. It just got all over the place. Okay, and we'll finish up the wrapped loop. This is not, <laughs> oh my God, it's too funny. That wire is hating me right now. Yeah, wire doesn't love being backtracked, but we're gonna try wrapping this up. So I'm gonna come over the first Brio around my spacer so that I can come over the next Brio and I'm gonna continue that pattern. So going this direction, every single one is coming over the front and towards the right. I'm wishing at this point I used a 22 gauge wire because this is proving quite a bit thick. But it's starting to add, now that I'm adding the, the wire, it is adding structure. This whole thing is becoming, feeling a lot more sturdy. But I want to do the same thing going the other way. So now this has come to the right and around. I can bring it right back over so it forms a cross pattern, a cross hatch. And I'm just going to do the exact same thing going back this way. So it ends up something like this. Kind of fun. I like it's interesting. I normally for a spacer would use like a metal spacer. Um, but in this case I tried out using some glass and I don't mind it. It's a little brighter looking, the whole thing is more transparent. Um, and then I'm just gonna I wrap that around. I'm gonna go ahead, love to wrap it a second time if I can manage it to secure it. And then cut it off. So there is technique two. You can always rotate your loops as needed. And this could be the center of a necklace. If you make a smaller version, this would definitely also really work with 22 gauge wire. 
um, you could make a smaller version into earrings. So that's the first way to do that. You can also do that wire technique a little differently. And I do, all, the next one, I remember learning in one of Neelay's workshops, and I think he <laughs> he said it was a, a Sarah Lovecraft technique, so it's, this one's been around. Um, but I'll show it to you. It, it uses a thicker base wire and then a thinner wire wrapped over it. So I'm gonna start with my 20 again, cause I know the 18 doesn't work with my Brio drops. <laughs> oh, my sister's in the comments, hi Rachel. All right, for this next one, let's get our wire prepped. This wire is looking a little mangled, so come in with my nylon jaw. I'm gonna fix that up. I wish my phone could move itself, like you know those like fancy robot cameras. <laughs> it's like I think it could fix it too. <laughs> We're gonna do a similar technique, but slightly differently. So this one just starts, I'm not gonna worry about my end right now. We just need to plug it. I, could, I guess I could use a bead stopper theoretically. And let's do a new color palette. Smoky quartz Brio drops. These are all, I mean, smoky quartz glass, white opal glass. And put those guys on. It does not really matter right now how you, how they're laying, because this will all get adjusted once we start doing the secondary wrapping. All right, I'm gonna try. Making the simplest patterns proving to be a lot for my brain today. Gray. Come on. That one's not cooperating. There it goes. I'm afraid it's going to get stuck. Come on. There's a small kink in the wire there. I can see it. Okay. There it, that one goes. All right, that's seven, right? So they're all strung on and we're gonna come in with a thinner gauge wire. So I'm gonna use 24 in this case. I think that'll work nicely. <laughs> yeah, here we go. And all this will get cleaned up in a bit, but I'm just gonna go ahead and make a messy loop so that both the ends of the wire are essentially stopped, that the beads can't come off. They're all on one end, which is perfect because I'm not ready for them yet. I need to anchor on my 24 gauge wire. <laughs> now I need an Apple watch that buzzes me when I'm off camera, great. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna come in with more than two feet just in case. And we're gonna go ahead and get this anchor. It doesn't have to be pretty to start. Just get yourself going so that after a few loops, you're nice and the coils are looking good and getting tighter. So we will can always come back and undo some of those. But here's how this one works. Bring one bead over at a time. and wrap it in a very similar way where you're going over the bead. And then this time, instead of using a spacer, we're doing wrapped loops as spacers. So let's do, that was two, yeah, it looks nice. I went over the bead and I did two wrapped loops. Bring over your next bead. Go over the bead. 
You want to keep this nice and tidy. And then follow that up by an extra loop. So basically I'm doing the loop one loop, second loop. And I'm <laughs> everything's getting twisted over here. Two loops, new bead. And it follows the same format. And it'll have a bit of a different look than the other one does. I'm always going over the bead. Oh, come on, you're giving me trouble. There we go, over the bead. And around. And number seven. And then we can kind of fix it up a little bit. three loops there to secure that and we'll see where we're at so now you can actually play with the shape a bit this also makes this nice for earrings that say use fewer beads you could kind of shape this up and turn them into some fun for some fun earrings we theoretically could do that right now um, the earrings I think are nice though when the beads there's nothing keeping those beads in one direction so Shall we experiment going back over the other direction? And that might hold our brios in place because we'll have a secure point on either end. Get this other, there, our starting wire out of the way and we'll try that out. Our experimentation continues. Okay. I am going on, I flipped over. There we go. So I'm not seeing any of the wires that are on the front of the beads. So this should all be on the back. And we're gonna come and do the same exact thing on the back of these brios and we'll see if we can get them a bit more secure. Well, let's actually do a wrap loop between each and see if that helps. Over and then over the bead. And let's secure that and let's check in where we are. So just by doing that, these beads are much more secure. So that's really nice. A lot more control about how they're gonna lay. And just from that, you could then do whatever you like, like you could. <laughs> Let's see if this hot sauce ball is gonna be helpful. You'd more likely grab like a mandrel, a little smaller mandrel. And <laughs> I'm trying to make this work. I didn't plan this far ahead. Let's see here. And you theoretically could um, finish up that into a, an earring of your choice. Maybe like a cute little oval. Let's see. What if it was a wide oval? I think I'm making my life harder than it needs to be, but I'm curious. This is a little tricky. Something like, it's a little, a little wonky, but the basic technique is there. We also never even cut off our base, our extra wire. But I can also finish it off just like I did the other one with some simple loops if I want. So just cut enough, leave yourself enough wire to make a simple loop.
Wanda, I love the mandrel tools. I currently just only know where my oval one is. Those mandrel tools are fantastic. So I'm just coming in and making some simple loops and essentially it'll be a similar version to this. This technique feels a little bit more secure to me because it has that thicker wire running throughout the whole thing and it's just one piece of wire so everything is kind of a bit more interconnected. But this technique kind of has its own application so it's nice to know as well. Making my 90 degree bend and then coming in to make my loop. That is our next technique. Alrighty, we've got some clusters, some focals, some pipe chain. I don't remember if I had more ideas. I want to take a quick pause here and catch up on comments. I am dehydrated. Um, I'm actually curious, does anyone else have an idea that we should try using the Brio Drops? Um, or about an idea for Brio Wrapping? I'd be more than happy to try one last thing in our last couple minutes, and then we'll call it a day. I can't believe it's literally been an hour already. That went so fast. Let me turn on some light. Only other idea. <laughs> Actually, now I remember what my other idea was. Was I wanted this cascading necklace of like different blue colors, but I wanted there to be something to break it up, like some sort of metal component, like similar looking metal component to break it up. So I did have an idea. Now I think I want to experiment. Jocken says, Sam. <laughs> Donna. Donna says, is there a way to wrap the brio so that the wire doesn't have to go up the back? Yes, absolutely. Um, sometimes I choose not to bring it back up. So I think you're referencing the first wrapping where I bring the wire back up to the top. I happen to really like the look of that. Oh, I'm so sorry. I've been talking, I my phone died. And now it's back. I apologize, give me one moment to reconnect my phone. <laughs> so everything I just said, no one could hear me. <sighs> I've only been doing this for two years. You think I'd be like an expert at it. Um, so I was answering the question about Brio wrapping and not going back up to the top. So I'll go revisit that first. Um, that is possible. I definitely have to do it when I don't feel like or don't think the style works to have the wrap go back up to the top. Give me a second to swap the audio. Okay, we are back in business. Thank you all for it. We're waiting. So the question was about bringing that wire back up to the top and 100%. You don't have to. It makes it a little bit more secure long term. But I have also, say the wire ended right there at the bottom, cut it right there, and been happy with it. <laughs> okay. 
Um, the last idea I did want to try was I had an idea for a little metal component that could help um, make my blue cascade dreams come to life because we have three blue colors. We have the aqua and the two tones of, of sapphire glass. And I was dreaming of mixing all of them. But I want something that can break them up a bit. So it's not just these guys for the entire necklace. See what I'm saying? So that's like, if that's my pattern, I want something else in there as well. So here's my idea, out of the way. <laughs> this will be the last thing of class, I promise. I'll hit you with have enough ideas to last you two weeks. Um, I want to make some quick components with lots of hammering. And I think it'll work nicely. So the thickest gauge wire I currently have is 18, so it's going to have to work. I would probably really want more like a 16 or 14 for this project. Let's see how big I want this to be. Something like that. That went flying. Our goal is to hammer this until very flat. I want texture. I can swap to the other side of my hammer. how you get the hammer tone look. I was thinking some little paddles could be nice. I was originally going to punch a hole in the top of the paddle to connect it, but now I see that that is not necessary. We can keep this a lot simpler for ourselves simply by making a wrap loop with the remaining wire. something more like that, that could then get mixed, kind of match up in size. To the Brio, and I think create a little bit of interest. Something like that. I think it could be quite pretty. Um, we're out of time though, but there is a really, that's, ba that's the basic technique of how people make those sorts of paddles. Um, you could also, my original idea was to make one large bar, flattened bar, punch a hole at the top. But I like this a lot more actually because, because we have a loop, we can connect that right onto our stringing wire. And look how gorgeous. Imagine a whole series of those with that lovely copper shine I think would be really really pretty so with that we've done Friday class I really hope you've taken at least one I think we had like five technique ideas to try here so definitely check out um, the replay if you want to revisit any of them and share what you make in jump chat I really really want to see it oh Deborah says too fast <laughs> I can show it again all right we've got our 18 gauge wire I'm going to give myself a little bit more room this time. And we're going to paddle the end of that flat with our flat hammer. I'm just using the edge so that I don't get the whole thing flat. I just want about the length of the Brio to be flattened. And it also it will expand as I hit it. It will kind of grow. A little hard to control the direction, but I like the look of that one. Let's add a little bit of our hammer tone design to it with our back of our hammer. It helps 
give it a little, a little bit more of a finished look. And then we'll just make our loop. This time I left a bit more wire for myself so I can actually have proper room to make a simple loop. And I'm just going to bend it backwards so that the loop is actually on the back of the component. And we kind of becomes a little bit more invisible in the piece, which is nice. So that's what it looks like from the side. And then there it is from the front. So that will look nice mixed in with some of our rear wraps on a string. And that I think is the final idea we got for class. Alrighty, I hope that is adds some clarification there. Ricky says C beads between on either side of the paddle will make that stay straight. Uh, exactly, I was thinking those little spacers will kind of hold the loop in place and keep it facing forward. I think that's great. <laughs> Brooke says someone took notes. Can I borrow them? <laughs> Uh, Cindy says you could also hammer the top flat at 90 degrees and punch a hole through that would be super fun to try. Yeah, 100% you could definitely punch a hole as well. I hope that was fun <laughs> and gave you a few ideas. I will see you on for Tuesday, definitely, if not before then. Um, and then on Wednesday, you can start sharing your creations using the March anniversary box. So you can start, start posting now if you want, and we want to, and then we'll just approve them on Wednesday in gem chat. Um, thank you all for a lovely week at the shop. It's been, it's been hectic. It's always a hectic week when we get the bead box out, but feeling thankful for my team and thank you for you all for always being so kind and fun to be, to, to get to work with and be creative with. So have a lovely week. I send you into the weekend with, I hope, some new ideas. Bye, everyone.